There's some astronauts on the spaceship. They're having a rave with a light show. They work really hard and they deserve it, okay? It flashes all of the colors of the rainbow, even the made-up ones, like indigo. The ship is moving at a significant fraction of the speed of light, but that's their perspective. You're watching on a planet as the spaceship passes you by. What do you see? Now this is a video about special relativity, and I'm going to use this and this as a tool to visualize some of the principles, and because it's colorful and I like color. But first, what do you know about special relativity? Maybe you know that fast-moving objects slow down their time, or that objects get flatter in the direction of travel, or that the speed of light is always constant no matter what. So yeah, an object that moves past you really fast, like really fast, slows down their time, and how that happens can be simply thought of as this handy space-time circle. Specifically this part. It's kind of like a weird speedometer for every object that you see that tells you how fast an object is moving through time versus how fast an object is moving through space. And to make things easier, both axes are unitless and only go from 0 to 100%. When the arrow is pointing straight up, an object is moving 0% through space, meaning not moving at all relative to you, and is experiencing time at 100% of the normal rate. On the other hand, for an object moving at the speed of light, the arrow points all the way to the right, moving at 100% of the possible speed, but it is moving 0% through time, meaning it's completely frozen, making it more like a picture than an object that exists in the universe. Every object not stationary to you, but not moving at the speed of light, will lie somewhere in between. Knowing the speed of an object, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the rate of time of that object, and vice versa. Simple enough, isn't it? For instance, if an object moves at 50% of the speed of light, 0.5c, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the other leg, which is 86.6%, meaning the object is experiencing time at only 86.6% of normal rate relative to you. Or in other words, a clock on that object will only move 8.66 seconds for every 10 seconds you see on your wristwatch. That's also interesting because it's only 13.4% slower. It's not 50% because it's a circle and not a straight line. In order to get an object's time to be 50%, you need the object to be moving at 86.6% of the speed of light. Next, length contraction acts in a similar way. Fast-moving objects are squished in the direction of travel. And once again, you can use that circle speedometer thing, but this time replace speed of time with length in the direction of travel. So now, when an object is not moving relative to the observer, its length in the direction of travel is at 100%, but speed it up to 50% of the speed of light, and its length is 86.6% long, as well as having its time speed also be 86.6%. Keep in mind, the width of the object is never changed. And at 100% speed, time is completely frozen, and the object becomes flat flat as a pancake in the direction of travel. Here's a bop quiz. If from the point of view of a person on the spaceship, there were another identical spaceship that kept itself one spaceship distance away. From your perspective as the passerby, would it look like this or like this? If there were a chain connecting the two, it would also be moving at the same speed and thus have the same contraction. And thus, it would be the second one. In a way, it's more like there's an inertial frame that contains all of these objects moving at the same speed. And this inertial frame is the one that contracts. So we have two space-time speedometers. Looking at the time dilation one, you could say, well, the arrow itself actually represents the speed of light, and you're always moving at the speed of light, even if that speed is through time. But I'm not sure what the length contraction arrow represents. Something, something about length folding into space. Leave a comment if you can think of a good analogy. Anyways, since these two speedometers give the same vertical value, you can think of it as one unified speedometer, where the horizontal component is speed through space relative to you, and the vertical component is the combined speed of time slash length in the direction of travel. Physicists will usually call this unitless value of speed that goes between 0 and 1 beta, and the other one 1 over gamma, with these formulas. And you can kind of see why this is a circle, because this part is basically the formula for a circle. Now, these speedometers aren't really speedometers, they only exist in your perspective. Put another way, if we started with you and a clock that were both stationary to each other, but then you started moving away, you would still see the clock slowed, and its length contracted, even though it never moved, so to speak. But it is moving, relative to you. And from the clock's perspective, it's you who slowed and contracted. This is not a contradiction, because it's all relative, and not in the Einstein marrying his cousin way. Now the final idea, light is always moving at the speed of light. This number, a spaceship that shoots a beam of light at the speed of light, when observed by an outside observer, still sees it moving at the speed of light, not the speed of light plus the speed of the spaceship. With this knowledge, if you place the lamp in the middle of the spaceship, from the perspective of someone on board, the light from the lamp will hit the sides at the same time. 
But if the spaceship is moving at 0.5c, from the perspective of you, the passerby, the left beam appears to move at 1.5c relative to the ship, whereas the right beam moves 0.5c relative to the ship, meaning the left beam hits the left side before the right beam hits the right side. Remember, they're actually still both 1c in both perspectives. What's simultaneous in one perspective is not in another. Which brings us to the light show. If we imagine putting LEDs everywhere on the ship that flashes and illuminates the whole ship simultaneously, we can kind of already see that the passerby will not see just a single flash. Rather, there will be bands of light that enter on the side away from the direction of travel and sweeps across to the side towards the direction of travel. Let's visualize this through time. Here, at the bottom, is what you are seeing in the present. The spaceship, as we saw earlier, instead of having a single flash illuminate the entire cabin all at once, shows many color bands sweeping in across the ship. When we move up, we see what future colors you're about to see inside the spaceship. Each of these diagonal color bands represent a simultaneous event for the spaceship that is not simultaneous for you. Thus, moving up and to the left is moving into their future and down and right their past. If we stop the spaceship so it has no relative motion, the lines will become horizontal again. And what's simultaneous for them will again become simultaneous for you. But if we increase the relative motion even more, the lines will become steeper, almost reaching completely vertical. If we had an infinite row of these spaceships, you can look left to see the future and look right to see the past. Not the whole past and future, just the past and future at these individual points. But still, in a way, you can see time. Granted, you're not actually seeing time. This is just how the present is, in your reality. And we're ignoring the time it actually takes for the light from all of this to reach your eyes. But in a similar way to how an object's speed of time rotates into their speed of space, it seems like their events in time get rotated into space as well. So to sum it all up, Ignoring the time it takes for light to reach your eyes, a spaceship moving really fast past you is like a movie that's playing at a slower speed, shorter in the direction it's going in, and one side of the screen is playing a few frames earlier than the other side. I mean, there's some other stuff too, like its color is blue shifted or red shifted depending on whether it's coming towards you or away. Subscribe for the ability to see time.